Well, thank you for joining us again. This is Tony Carvajal. I'm the Executive Vice President of Florida Tax Watch, and I'm here with Kurt Wenners, uh, Senior Vice President. And as uh, those of you who watch these things know, one of the state's top leaders in uh, budget appropriations and fiscal issues. And we're going to talk a little bit about the last week of session. We are in the home stretch now, and with a week to go, there are some uh, interesting budget negotiations and bills in play. And Kurt, let's not waste any time. I'm gonna come straight to you. Just one week left. What are the budget issues and negotiations? Uh, where do they stand and what do we need to know? Well, as you know, the, the House uh, a week or so ago passed the $97 billion budget. The Senate passed the $95 billion budget. And so now they have to work out the differences. And this weekend they started the budget conference process uh, with the subcommittees meeting. Uh, trying to work out some of the um, differences between the two. They finished their work on Monday night and now the un all the unresolved issues have been bumped up to the appropriations chairs. They got some stuff done over the weekend, but there's a lot of stuff that they didn't. Um, the biggest stalemate appears to be the biggest part of the budget, the $42 billion uh, health and human services budget. Uh, that subcommittee met only one time. They made an offer that wasn't accepted. They decided they're too far apart and that they needed to bump it up to the uh, appropriation share. And then the speaker and the president will make any final decisions. They're pretty far apart on hospital and nursing home spending, and there's still no agreement on the speaker's priority of extending postpartum Medicaid benefits. The Senate has made an offer to reduce the hospital rate reduction from 8% to 1%, but that was not accepted yet. So um, that's still going on. Also, there are states learned that they're going to be expanding the uh, increased FMAP, which is the um, a percentage that the feds pay for Medicaid. That's going to go into the next budget year for, I think, three months. That's about $400 million that they can have. They haven't decided if they're gonna to try to figure, work that into the budget or not. Uh, this, the Senate has also made an offer to go about halfway on the postpartum benefits. The speaker wants to uh, expand it from two to 12 months. The, um, how, uh, the Senate has now offered to do it for six. This is something that a lot of states are doing. The feds have recently off, authorized it. Texas and Georgia recently did it because you know it, it's, it helps a lot of women. I think it'll help 100,000 women in Florida. And then it also saves money down the road because it reduces complications. So um, it's that's something that we need to look at. Education is also still a big issue. Um, the Senate, the House was able to appropriate more for education because they use some of the federal funds called the ESSER funds, um, which the Senate has not yet included. You know the on top of the money that we're getting um, from the stimulus package for uh, just state recovery, we're also getting about $12 billion in education funding and how that's going to be worked in uh, hasn't been decided. So I think that's still uh, the two biggest parts of the budget are not surprisingly the two biggest uh, sticking points. Well, Kurt, I know you summarized a lot of this in the budget watch reports that we have posted on our website. So if somebody wants to look and see where we started the week, how things compare, they can go to floridataxwatch.org and look up the, the budget uh, watch reports. And I found, uh, I always find them informative. One of the things I noticed in those reports was that you mentioned that neither of the budgets actually use some of the federal dollars, that $10 billion that everybody keeps talking about that's coming into the state but there were some changes in the last few days. Tell me a little bit more about how the uh, federal stimulus dollars are, are, are getting into the play now. Yes, you're right. There's, there's $10 billion from the state fiscal recovery fund in the uh, um, American Rescue Plan that's coming to Florida. And neither budget included it in their budget total, but the House did lay out a contingency on if we get at least half this money, these are the things that we want to spend it on. You know, it's a lot of infrastructure kind of thing, one-time spending, which is the right thing to do with this one-time money. Um, the Senate didn't address it at all, uh, but just recently in the um, conference committee, the Senate offered, uh, made an offer on using this money. They, 
these um, House had, uh, had written how they wanted to spend about 8 billion of the 10. The Senate came back with 3.4 billion. And there's a couple things that are the same with the House and the Senate. They both want to put $2 billion into the DOT work program, which is a very good idea. And they also want to uh, put more money into the new Water Protection and Sustainability Trust Fund that they're creating this session, which uh, helps to do septic to sewer conversions, which is another big problem in Florida. The Senate came up with some new issues. They want to uh, put $300 million in Florida forever. Uh, they want $100 million to clean up the Piney Point phosphate mess down there. Um, $100 million for the State Emergency Operations Center. Uh, then they want to put a $264 million as a supplement to PICO to make to do some higher education construction projects. And they also have $30 million in for the African American Cultural and Historic Grant Program. That adds up to about $3.4 billion. There will be some more work on that. Um, the Senate Budget Chair Stargell suggested that they don't have to spend all the money now, and Florida Tax Watch agrees with that. Let's let's don't rush. It's a lot of money. We have until 2004 actually to spend it. So let's see. Uh, make sure that we're doing it on the right things, and uh, you know we should probably leave a little bit of money to see if something develops uh, next year. So um, that's a, still a work in progress. It's going to be one of the biggest things. And I imagine that it will come down to the speaker and the president working all that stuff out. You know, I remember the uh, inauguration speeches of both the, the speaker and the president, and they were talking about how uh, they were going to be thinking about shrinking government. And they had these exercises, which we're talking about a six and uh, maybe even a 3% uh, reduction once we saw that things were getting better they're actually probably going to be marshalling one of the largest budgets in history, $100 billion. And uh, that's just amazing to me. But it's not only about appropriations this week. I, you know, I can't believe we've gone this far and haven't even mentioned taxes yet. Uh, we had one of the largest and most significant tax packages uh, pass earlier this week when we updated e-fairness and replenished the reemployment, uh, uh, the unemployment compensation fund trust fund with uh, some dollars from that revenue. And it's going to impact things like uh, business rent tax or commercial lease payments um, and the rounding issues down the road, significant. But that's not the only tax uh, stuff that's going on. Uh, Kurt, tell me a little bit about the additional tax cuts. And if you wanna talk about e-fairness, I mean, we've been talking about it for 20 years. Let's not stop celebrating. You, you've done a lot of work on this. Uh, let's take as many laps around the track as we possibly can. Yeah, we were certainly happy to see the, gov the governor sign that bill. It's now uh, law at when the effective date rolls around. But, you know, I think it's one of the most significant tax bills in the history of the state. It does a awful lot of things, a lot of things that we've been pushing for some time. Um, so I, we're right to keep pushing, talking about that. That is the true tax package. But as they usually do, um, they've come up with tax packages in both the House and the Senate that make some cuts, some tax relief, do some tax administration stuff, address you know, some property tax issues. And uh, there's two competing ones now. The, uh, the House came out with a bill like they usually do, then the Senate has released one as well. Uh, the House bill provides about 136 million in tax savings and the Senate bill uh, cuts taxes by about 112 million, 112.7. Uh, most of this is non-recurring. I think 94 uh, million in the House and 74 million in the Senate are non-recurring. The vast majority of that is, the, is from sales tax holidays. And so with these one-time cuts and um, a lot of local stuff, the recurring reduction in state taxes is only about you know, 13 million in the Senate and 9 million in the House. So this isn't gonna have a big impact on the state budget, um, but you know, there is some significant tax savings in there and some good smaller things that they're putting in that we think will help the state. Uh, so the bills do share a lot of provisions, but there's still differences that must be worked out of course, there's a back to school holiday and a disaster preparedness uh, holiday. 
in both bills. That's no surprise. We do that almost every year. Uh, there's a couple slight differences. The Senate wants uh, seven day periods. The, I mean, the House wants seven day periods. The Senate wants eight. But um, it, those are significant. People like them. Uh, the retail industry likes them. So it's something that Tax Watch has always supported. And I think those are going to be a sure thing. Another thing that's in both bills, um, probably the next biggest single tax cut is uh, uh, there's currently a 50% um, property tax discount for multifamily projects that provide affordable housing to extremely low income and low income families. Uh, it, they are increasing that to 100%. So basically they're exempting that. It comes in late in the uh, agreement, like 15 years in, but um, it's a big deal. It'll save about $23 billion. And with some of the cuts that they're doing to affordable housing this session, uh, I think that's a good idea. Uh, they also want to extend uh, a sales tax exemption for creating data centers, which they passed a few years ago. No one has applied for it yet, but apparently there's a big data center that is looking to move to Florida. And so they extended that deadline to five uh, years so they could uh, take advantage of it. Couple small sales tax exemptions, including one for items used in independent living for the elderly and the disabled, things like bed rails and shower seats. Um, that's a that's a nice thing to add to. And they also have a, a strong families tax credit program, which would allow businesses to take a dollar for dollar uh, tax credit against several different taxes for contributions that they make to uh, nonprofit organizations that focus on uh, children. So that's, they're looking for a way to get more money into children's things. Um, uh, some of the differences, the House has a new sales tax holiday, which the Senate has not bought into yet. It's, it's a Freedom Week sales tax holiday or, or a recreation holiday where they will, um, where exempt will be tickets to movies, concerts, sporting events, and then things like camping, fishing, boating, and general outdoor supplies. It's about uh, $44 million worth of savings over seven days, but that's a new one and not sure the, the Senate's gonna go along. The uh, House is also recommending a, a cut for aquaculture property taxes. And then in the Senate, a couple of things that they have that are uh, different is they want to reestablish the qualified target industry, the, the QTI tax refund program, which is one of the most successful programs that the state has for economic development. It returns anywhere from four to six to one. Uh, this is something that Tax Watch has recommended. We're glad to see it in the Senate package. Hope that the House will, will come along. And they also want to create a um, internship tax credit where uh, where you would get a two thousand dollar credit for each student in, uh, intern employed uh, there's a lot of uh, restrictions on it that make it kind of narrow and hard to uh, qualify for but um, that that looks like that's still on the table there's a lot of smaller things in there that i won't go into but if you want to go to our uh, legislative update page you will find a complete listing and explanation of all the things in there so that's what's going on with the tax package. They're going to have to bring them up on the floor and decide between them. And, you know, we could always see things added. Uh, that happens uh, just about every year as well. So that's a still a work in progress. Kurt, it always amazes me how you can summarize, you know, almost two weeks worth of work in just a few minutes. And uh, you are a living testament to uh, Florida Tax Watch being the eyes and ears of Florida's taxpayers. I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, so let me mention a few things as we, as we are closing today's program. First, uh, it looks like we'll be able to land the budget on time, which means it's very likely that the legislature will get out on time. That's next Friday. And I'll also mention that uh, turkey season starts right after that. We'll be looking at the budget and, and trying to find out those things that, that might have been stuck in and don't seem appropriate in that process and, and make some comments. You'll be able to read those uh, on our website, floridataxwatch.org, or if you'll join us at our spring meeting, June 2nd and 3rd in Orlando this year, we'll dive a lot deeper into all of these topics as well as the other issues that we were working on during this legislative session. Hey, Kurt, that reminds me, let me just ask you quickly, 
it's the last week and the budget is going to be the talk of the town, but it's going to sit on the table for a few days. So what are the other issues that they'll be talking about and that we're watching as, as the uh, last week of session closes? Uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of bills. They're going to be um, on the floor uh, through the rest of this week and all of next week. Uh, there's a couple small uh, meetings that have been called, but they're not. that's not going to bring in a lot of new bills. But there's a lot of bills still on the table, some big ones that they haven't um, agreed on yet. For example, the Senate wants to increase the unemployment benefits to uh, the maximum amount from $275 to $375. Uh, the House is not quite on board and the Senate and the governor recently came out against it. So the Senate's holding out hope, but that looks like that may not happen. Uh, they're still debating repealing PIP, the personal, in uh, personal injury protection and in, uh, insurance that's mandated in Florida. They're talking about repealing that. There is going to be a big expansion of vouchers. Um, they're combining all the uh, school choice programs and um, streamlining it and increasing the, uh, uh, you know, or making it so more people can qualify. Uh, it's going to be a large thing. There's been some differences between the two approaches, but it appears uh, the House passed their bill and it appears the Senate is going to amend their bill to align it with the House. So that could be a done deal. Uh, we're hoping to see some um, some improvements in telehealth. There's a lot of different bills moving right now. Nothing's been decided. They're different. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully something will get done. Uh, there's also the future of the MCORS program, which is the big toll road program the state's planning. Um, the Senate wants to basically repeal it and then replace it with a, a less costly mm -hmm less prescriptive program where it gives DOT more of the normal planning uh, uh, flexibility to do that. The House um, basically just made a small change to MCORS, but they did take up the, after the Senate passed their bill, they did take it up in their in appropriations in the House and passed it. So that will be going to the floor. So we'll see that still needs to be worked out what's gonna happen there, but it's looking like the Senate plan um, could happen. And the last thing I'll mention is gambling, which time's also running out on the Senate uh, Senate president. This is his issue and he really would like to see it happen, but time's running out. They want to create a gambling commission and basically decouple, um, you know, card rooms from live racing. So it'll let paramutuals and high lie and uh, some horse tracks, not thoroughbred, but the other ones, uh, to, to offer some uh, card rooms without having to do live racing. And then there's the Seminole Compact, which is all part of these negotiations, which we're currently discussing. It doesn't look like that's going to get done soon, but hopefully it will, because that's a lot of money Florida is leaving on the table. So the Senate, the president has also talked about maybe doing a special session on that. So we'll have to wait and see, but it's going to be hard to get uh, a gambling bill passed during this regular session. Well, that's a lot on the plate. And I know there are other issues like the Every Child a Swimmer bill that uh, we're monitoring and a few other uh, projects. I'm not sure if they'll finish everything within 60 days. They may be coming back sometimes in between here and, and, and the next session. They'll certainly be back for committee meetings earlier this next year. And I'm just inviting folks that are listening today uh, we're in that process now where we're setting our summer research agenda and preparing for next year. We'll discuss this all at the spring meeting, June 2nd and 3rd in Orlando. If you want to reach out to either Kurt or me or any of the team members here at Florida Tax Watch, we're ready to listen to your ideas on, on how to improve Florida's future in this process. So, Kurt, thanks so much for your insights. You can find uh, some of the written reports at floridataxwatch.org. Looking forward to one more conversation next week, celebrating all the great things that we've been proud, uh, part of and hearing about where the, the budget ends up. And uh, I guess next week, let's also talk about uh, how we'll uh, focus on the turkey process as we move forward. Uh, for now, this is Tony Carvalho. I'm signing out from Florida Tax Watch. It's going to be a busy week and looking forward to hearing from you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.